Welcome to my weekly Spot the Fake Magic the Gathering card video. This week I'll be covering using the weight or mass of a card in order to determine if it is authentic or not. And I'm going to start out with a quick reenactment of exactly what happened when this scale came in the mail. So, put the batteries in, turned it on, um, and I took a counterfeit Magic Gathering card and I put it on here and said, hmm, 1.94 grams. Well, European Gradient says that an authentic card should be 0.7 grams to 0.8 grams. That card is wildly out of range. Then I took an authentic version of the same card, put it on here, 1.84 grams. Hmm. Something's not right. And that's what brings us to where we are today. So... It turns out that the 0.7 to 1.7 to 1.8 gram range given by European Grading uh, was actually pulled from their Facebook page when they were talking about issues with reback cards, uh, specifically rebacked alpha beta cards, uh, you know, from the collectors and the international editions. And in that case, alpha, beta, and it seems unlimited all have that range of 0.7 to 0.8 grams. Uh, 1.7 to 1.8 grams and it turns out that other sets don't really follow that they have ranges of about a tenth of a gram but that range is shifted uh, slightly up from there for most sets so what I had to do from there is weigh out a bunch of cards and see exactly where things fell So before I got really into uh, weighing all of these cards, my first thought was that this cheap Chinese scale that I got for $6 on eBay wasn't in range. It wasn't calibrated correctly. So I went to work and I took a dime and I weighed it on two of our scales that are calibrated on a regular basis and basically made this into like a secondary standard. And I weighed it out at 2.27 grams on one scale, 2.28 grams on a different scale. And when I put it on my scale at home and got 2.28 grams, I said, great, excellent. This scale is actually doing well, which is a shock because it goes to two decimal places out. And once upon a time, scales like this were pretty expensive. <clears throat> so the scale actually seems to work and have a decent calibration. So this is just to give you a flavor of exactly what weighing all these cards entailed. Uh, this is just, you know, time lapse of me weighing stacks of cards. So I'd take 40, 50 cards, sometimes up to 100, and I would weigh them one at a time and record the values on an index card. Eventually I was just recording them straight into a computer, but all the index card values were going into a, a spreadsheet on my computer, and it would spit out something like this. And this graph here shows on the x-axis the number card that I weighed, the second, third, fourth, fifth, and then the y-axis says the weight of that card. And what this uh, ended up helping me do was uh, determining that th there were some, uh, some issues with the scale and long-term consistency. And the masks, uh, you could see that the scatter trends downward, so that over time you can see the cards are getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Well, that was just a random chunk from a box, and although there's a possibility that they were randomly coming out in that fashion, uh, more likely was that something was messing up. So there's two different causes for this to happen. So one is, when I first start weighing the cards, I'm very, you know, place on the balance 1.80 grams, take the weight. Well, by the end of a long stack of cards, I'm taking the cards, I'm kind of flopping them down on the balance. And if you hit the card on the balance harder, this cheap balance actually will start giving slightly different numbers. So in this case, there was a two hundredths of a gram difference between these two. And if you weren't aware, a uh, hundredth of a gram is about the weight of a grain of sand. So that, that's kind of the, the scale that we're talking on here. So, you know, this scale is pretty accurate for how cheap it is, but it still has its issues. So that was one of the issues. The other issue is slowly over time, this scale tends to drift. Uh, and the issue is how do you catch that drift? Well, one of the ways was occasionally I would take my dime and I would throw it on the scale and see if the scale was still within calibration. Uh, but the other more common way was I would quickly be able to develop usually uh, an upper and lower bound that I was expecting for a set. And if this was a you know a card from Visions and I put it on the scale 1.80 grams, if that was above or below what I was expecting, 
I would take it off and I'd do the quick reset and then I would reweigh the card. And in, in, in one respect, you're kind of looking at it, well, that, that's fudging your numbers. And another, well, if I weigh a card and it is outside of that range, the first thing I'm going to do is reweigh that card. You know, if I did have solid standards. And sometimes the card would re reweigh exactly the same. And I, I have a couple of these scatters that you'll see where I have these outliers. And in those cases, I'd weighed those cards a couple times. I don't know why they were outliers. Maybe they had some gunk on the back. Maybe the, the ink was extra thick that day. But ba basically, I, I was trying, you know, the, the bounds start to establish themselves pretty quickly. And if the card was outside of the bounds, I would, you know, run through my tests. I would, I would you know, reset the scale, make sure that things were functioning properly before I declared that card that was outside of the bounds that I had set so far was legitimate. And then I would add that card to the list. So that, that was the issue of working with this scale, and that was actually the limiting issue of working on this project was this scale. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I trust the numbers on this scale to some extent, but the type of data and the interpretation that I wanted to do was beyond the reproducibility of this scale. So that, that's kind of the, why this video is limited to where it is, but it's mostly just to point out, you know, this is a good direction to go in. Uh, definitely, uh, you, you'll see that this can be used, uh, you know, pretty reasonably to determine if a card is counterfeit. Um, it, all, all of my counterfeits fail on this, even the ones, uh, you know, the the website for the, the one type of counterfeit specifically nails down your your card. These counterfeit cards weigh to this hundredth of a gram, whereas a real magic card weighs to this hundredth of a gram. Well, unfortunately, or fortunately for us, real magic cards run the gamut. And uh, the counterfeit cards, even though they're saying they weigh exactly this, they don't weigh exactly that. They run, a, they run their own gamut. Uh, and that's just the name of the game. The card stock is, uh, you know, can only be reproduced at a certain level. The ink actually will weigh a certain amount to uh, affect the, the, the weight of the card. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep going through these examples, but keep these things in mind. So this is just real quick. These are uh, scatters that I made of each of the sets as I was weighing them out. And really what you should expect to see is something kind of randomized over time as I'm weighing more and more cards. It should develop the, these outer bounds, but the, the dots should kind of be all over the place. I mean, not 100% random, but if there, there's bad data or if there's something going on, you're going to see clumps and clusters. Um, the... The main thing here is uh, this data is only good for calibrating the scale. Uh, after all of this data, I'm going to get to um, uh, different sets of data. But interestingly enough, here in, uh, 2000, in Modern Masters 2015, uh, it looks like there's two separate peaks. And uh, what it was is when I was going through the cards, uh, I, I had a area of uncommons in the middle of two areas of commons. So I have to wonder, uh, you know, they're cut from different sheets. Uh, is, is that part of the issue here? They were all within the same bounds, but there, there was a, a distri dis difference in distribution. Um, so it, it's inter more interesting when you get to the actual distribution graphs, and you'll, you'll see there that uh, s some of the distributions are just all over the place. You know, there's a bunch of cards weighing the same weight, uh, and sometimes, uh, like in Visions here, you see there's two outliers way up at the top at 1.83. So 4th edition uh, was one of the, the lighter sets. Uh, on the left hand and the, the bottom is the, the weight on the x-axis, on the y-axis is the number of cards of that weight. So planar chaos kind of all over the place. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of let these scroll. Uh, and, and all of these, if you'll notice, almost all of them have a, a range of uh, 0.1. So they're, they're basically got a center point, or even if they don't follow the center point, and then plus or minus 0 0.05 grams from there. So ev even though the ranges differ, they, they still differ by about the same amount. You know, Mirage is clustered to the lower end. Uh, here comes the Modern Masters 2015, and you'll notice there's two separate peaks, and that's what I was talking about when I brought up the other distribution. You know, maybe the uncommons are slightly lighter than the, the commons, but it's hard to say because 
I got all that from one box. Was it just that printing? Really, what I need is more data on all of this to, in order to get you know a truer picture on if that matters. Because in most cases here, I was just waiting commons. Uh, a couple of the sets I wasn't like unlimited. I had lots of uncommons and rares that I was weighing out. Um, or is this saga's kind of got a center point there? It's kind of neat, but here's unlimited. It just it's kind of an interesting graph compared to the rest of them. Uh, you'll notice that Visions uh, has this one-off at uh, 1.83. I got two cards weighing 1.83, but then in between that, there were zero cards at 1.81. So this is this is kind of the main uh, meat of all of this uh, data collecting, and this shows the the sets in uh, reverse chronological order. Shows their distribution, and then it shows the average weight of cards in that set. And it's kind of interesting that it, it has some kind of shape to it. Uh, I'm not sure what that shape means. But really, you could use this uh, kind of as a guideline to see if your cards are falling within that target range for your set. And you can just pause on this and bring it up. And what this all comes down to is, uh, you know, you can look at the, this chart here that I put together. And this is just arbitrary. And down at the bottom, I've got the weight. And let's assume that the cards in your set that you're looking at are 1.70 grams to 1.80 grams. Well, just because the card is outside of that range slightly... <clears throat> let's say by 0 0.02, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a counterfeit, but it means you should be using some caution when you're trying to evaluate that card. Uh, but th the scale definitely shoots up quickly. If you're 0 0.03 outside of that scale, you're, you're definitely getting into that scale where, you know, this is probably a counterfeit. And beyond that, you know, this test is basically saying this is a counterfeit card. Uh, there, there are some things that you might want to look at, you know, the condition of the card, uh, is it wore down, is it looking bad, uh, those kind of things can impact the weight of the card. Uh, is, there, is there gunk on the card, is there something that's going to add to this weight, because you're looking at such small numbers. But on the whole, if you've got a clean card, it, it should fall within its range. And the the other questions that I've had throughout all of this, like I've said, uh, you know, does the rarity affect this in any way, shape, or form? I just don't have the sample size to test that. Uh, but overall, this test is fast. It's easy. The scales are getting dirt cheap. And it definitely uh, will pick out cards um, that are counterfeit that otherwise look really good. And I just wanted to add this thing at the end. If the counterfeiter is making a batch of cards and they're aiming for a weight that is more in line with modern cards, then they're going to miss the weight of the older cards. And if they're aiming for the weight of the older cards, they might miss the weight of the modern cards. So because they're all going to be one batch, that's something that even a really good counterfeit is going to have trouble with if, if one set weighs different than another because they're probably printing them out all at once in the same card stock. So the, this test is probably going to continue to be relevant. And uh, one last note, if anyone has any counterfeits that they want to send my way, I would be more than happy to take them off their hands. Uh, I definitely don't want to buy counterfeits, so my pool of counterfeits for all these tests that I'm doing is pretty limited, and I'm always looking for more.